In the headlines, Governor of River State joins presidential race, says some presidential aspirants in race for personal gains. Survivor of Kaduna explosion speaks on ordeal. Two drug traffickers excrete 165 wraps of cocaine as 2,295 kilogram substances intercepted. And on the foreign scene, new rounds of Ukraine-Russia talks expected in Turkey amid catastrophic situation in Mariupol. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. <music> The news in full. Governor of River State Nyesom Wike says he has the capacity to win the 2023 presidential election for the People's Democratic Party. Wike stated this during a consultative meeting with stakeholders of the Benue chapter of the PDP at the government house in Mokurli on Sunday. The governor, who intimated the stakeholders about his intention to run for the presidency, solicited for Benue PDP votes in the coming National Delegates Convention of the party, even as he stressed on zoning. For you to remove this APC from power, see, my, my, my mother told me when a madman flocks you, don't run. If you run, the madman will uh, pursue you. If you flock you, take stick back. Smoke the madman. That, 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 the madman, this is very painful. Then the madman will start uh, running. This APC, they require people too. Who will tell us uh, enough is uh, enough. And I'm that person that can tell them enough is uh, enough. <laughs> we must take this power. Power, they know the dashable. No. Do you dash power? No. Power is what? Taking. I'm, I'm ready to take it for PDP, and I will take it for PDP. <laughs> no, if you are running the election, they don't have that power, then they take a power. All these people who are the running the election, they support me, support me. Do, do what? I've come out. I'm going to take this power from, from APC Amen. back to PDP Amen. by the grace of uh, God. God has given us what it is, and that's why God is making APC to make mistake every day, every day, every. That is how you know God is with you. Yes. So I'm begging all of you here, Abba Moro, Suswan, Senator, Spoker, spoke well, members, Chairman, don't go and sell your vote. Don't go and sell your vote. Give me, give me, give me. Give me because I'm the only one that can have the capacity. APC people, when they hold meeting, they say, Look, oh, don't enter with case problem. They must enter. <laughs> and when they have entered, I've captured them. Give me this to do. Let me return power to PDP. Candidate of the People's Democratic Party at the 2019 Kano governorship election, Abba Yusuf, popularly known as Abba Gidagida, has defected to the new Nigeria People's Party. Yusuf announcing his defection alongside his running mate Aminu Gwerso and many other members of the Konkwesia movement at a gathering on Sunday at Konkwesia House, Diso Ward in Kano, said they discovered that the PDP is not different from all progressive party which they left in 2018. Meanwhile, reports say the move is believed to be part of the agenda towards the planned defection of the movement's leader, Rabiu Konkwaso. According to uh, reports, Konkwaso is targeting March 30th for his defection to the newly resuscitated party. Still talking politics, Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, says the newly elected members of the National Executive Committee of the party will not disappoint the party but work hard to deliver on their mandate. Adamu stated this at the Eagle Square Abuja while delivering his acceptance speech shortly after being sworn in. The former chairman of the APC National Reconciliation Committee stressed the need for the party members to renew their faith in APC, its leadership and constitution at all levels in order to herald a new dawn. And always in the interest of the sovereignty. We need to renew our faith in our party and its leadership at all levels in order to herald a new dawn. 
we need to commit to the resolution of our, of our crisis within the confines of our party constitution. We must resist the temptation to blow every minor personal disagreement into a major party crisis. It is time for us to do things differently. When we quarrel, we open our flanks to our rival political parties that are only too eager to exploit them for their own benefits. We promise you here and now that we shall heal any wounds in our party. We shall effect lasting re reconciliations among our members and we shall go into the next general election as a strong and united party. We offer our hands of friendship to all our members. I want to assure you that my colleagues and myself will run an open door policy to all members of this great party. No administration in the history of Nigeria or anywhere in the world has performed as much as we have done within the subsequent time, given the enormity of the problems that we inherited from the misrule of the, of the PDP for 16, 16 good years. Delta State Governor Ifan Okowa remains committed to working to better the lives of residents till the last day of his administration. Addressing a news conference at his office in Asaba, Information Commissioner Charles Anyagu said the politics of 2023 will not deter the governor and his administration from delivering more infrastructural development, wealth creation and peace and security for Deltans and residents of the state. The commissioner is reacting to certain reports in the social media saying that the state government will not be distracted by such reports ahead of the 2023 elections. He also commends the media for objectivity in reportage, urging social media practitioners to learn from their colleagues in the conventional media by being professional according to the tenets of journalism. I wished that as an administration that would move in a certain direction. I have a feeling that we have moved in another direction, even when we have not announced that we have moved in any direction. We have said, if you recall the last time I briefed you, that up to the 28th of May 2023, we will stay focused, we will as an administration continue to commission projects, we will continue to keep faith with the promises that were made to our people, both in 2015 and in 2019. But I must commend you that you have been very professional, you have not behave like those who do not understand the tenets of journalism. I must acknowledge your professionalism and the support you are giving to us as an administration and to re-echo the fact that as an administration that will stay focused with the issues that we have conversed right from 2015 up to the present day and indeed up to the end of time in 2023 of this administration. On insecurity, a victim of the suspected improvised explosive device that rocked the Ummani community near Rigasa in Igabi local government area of Kaduna State, Rabia to Ibrahim, says Allah saved her, her life from the explosion planned by the perpetrators of evil. Narrating her ordeal, she said she went out of her house to collect her phone where she took it to charge and the battery when she heard the explosion. I was on my way back from collecting my phone. I felt something covered my head. Then I bent down, and the next thing I saw was blood dropping. I was rushed to the hospital alongside another victim. They accepted to treat me and refused to treat him. They asked for my number and I said I didn't have a number. Then they transferred us to 44 Army Reference Hospital, where we were later treated. Commissioner of Police in Oshun State, CP Wale Olokode, parades suspected criminals at the police headquarters in Oshogbo, Oshun State Capital. The suspects include fake military officers, internet fraudsters, bugglers and scammers, while a couple is arrested for allegedly stealing a six-day-old baby from its mother. The report. The commissioner of police said a case of obtaining money under false pretense 
was reported against Agbebaku David on the 2nd of March and that police operatives swung into action immediately and arrested the suspect who identified himself as Captain Agbebaku David of the Nigerian Army. The commissioner said in the course of investigation, Agbebaku David confessed that he deserted from the army in the year 2015 and was later arrested, decated and consequently dismissed by the army authority in the year 2020 as Lance Corporal. The said fake captain, who was also a dismissed soldier from Nigeria Army as a Lance Corporal in the year 2020, and was parading himself as captain captain, is also a car dealer. This Ibrahim Ajibola and one other who is not at large took stolen Honda car with registration number RGB399 to David Agbekuba and bought the car from the from one suspect at the rate of one million six hundred thousand and facilitated the payment to this suspect now at large by doing fake alerts to him. With I was brought here because I am a dismissed soldier. And the police were saying because as I'm a dismissed soldier that I might know anything concerning robbery incident in the Ocean State, which I know nothing about. Truly, I'm a dismissed soldier. The uniform I put on was not seen in me. But as a dismissed soldier, I was forced to put it on for press intervention. This is my original army certificate. There, I'm 08 NA. Public 61, public 1766, army number. I was charged for a case of mutiny. So I have to run for my life because mutiny is death penalty. So after the mass is pleaded that they should not sentence the whole soldiers to death, they still end up packing everybody to Kanji. So I run away from Kanji to my hometown in Edo State. I'm a deserter. I joined the Nigerian Army in 2014, public 71 regular equipment intake. So I was deserted in Medjugorje because I run for my life 2015. But now I'm doing Uber with my under accord. I collect it in Solimenta. So I was arrested for an imposter on the way from Ibadan to Oshobu. On my way going back, I was arrested by PRU police officer because I put in on camera t-shirts. So that's all what I know. I know David, Captain David, as a soldier and also a prophet of God. So I'm also an instrumentalist and I assist in the church. So I do follow him to minister sometimes for special administration to play instruments with him. But I'm also an engineer, I, I repair a laptop. So sometimes police to arrest me on the road due to the laptop I carry. And I told them, I met him as a father. And he said I will give me an ID card. Though it's not an original ID card, but it's just a staff card. One of David's accomplices, Ibrahim Ajibola, was arrested for conspiring with him to sell one stolen Honda Accord car to a dealer at Abekuta in Ogun State. Exhibits recovered from the suspect include a Honda car, four Nigerian Army ID cards, one military photograph, one laminated military certificate, one stamp pad belonging to Nigerian Army, one full military camouflage kit, three military face caps, two dependent ID cards and a sum of 100,000 Naira. The CP also paraded a 28-year-old suspected fraudster at Dejrigbe Oluashion for creating a Facebook and WhatsApp profile account with the name Adeoye Ewolua and female pictures pretending to be a woman to defraud men of their hard-earned money. The Commission of Police also paraded a couple, Ola Tubosu and Ganiat Abbas, for allegedly stealing a six-day-old baby from his mentally ill mother in Iwo. Still talking crime, two drug traffickers, Elvis Iro, aged 53, and Umazo K. Christian, 42, have excreted a total of 165 wraps of cocaine following the arrest at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency for ingesting the illegal drug. 
NDLE on Sunday also said the agency intercepted consignments going to Australia, China, Qatar, Ireland, Thailand, and in a raid in Rivers, Ogun and Enugu states seized about 2,293 kilogram substances and cash. The report. Under observation, in the agency's custody, 53-year-old Elvis, who is a father of four children, he is from Abiriba, Ohafia local government area of Abia State. On Saturday, 19th March, upon his arrival from Addis Ababa, got arrested for ingesting 65 pellets of cocaine weighing 1.376 kilograms. During preliminary interview, he claimed he is an interior decorator but had to go into drug trafficking because he needed money to start a coffee business, take care of his family and stock his newly acquired shop with curtain materials and accessories in Lagos. He said he would have been paid 1,000 US dollars on successful delivery of the drug in Abuja. So this will be the content of this drug is cocaine. So you can mark it on another one that will go in the Another passenger on the same flight, 42-year-old Uwa Ezuoke Christian, ingested 100 pellets of cocaine with a total weight of 2.243 kilograms. Ikena, who hails from Ojoto, Idemili South, local government area of Anambra State, claims he is a businessman dealing in baby wares before venturing into drug trafficking. During preliminary interview, he said he traveled to Addis Ababa to buy the drug for 10,000 US dollars. After selling, he sold his land in his village and took loans from friends to be able to raise money to buy the drug. He claimed he had to go into drug to raise money for his business after being duped of 15,000 US dollars by his friend who lived in China. In a related development, narcotic officers of the Directorate of Operation and General Investigation intercepted substantial quantities of methamphetamine, cocaine and cannabis sativa packaged for exports to Australia, China, Qatar, Ireland and Thailand through some courier companies in Lagos. While operatives also intercepted 2.9 kilograms of methamphetamine in packs of black soup, and tuna machine heading to Australia and Qatar, 600 grams of cocaine concealed in school certificates and fire folders going to Australia and Thailand were equally seized. No less than 25.5 kilograms cannabis concealed in packs of dudu ocean soap and tins of palm fruit extracts, banga, heading to China and Ireland was also seized at a courier company in Lagos. Similarly, 2,293.324 kilograms of assorted illicit drugs and 791,100 naira were recovered in major raids by operatives in Ogun, Rivers and Enugu State in the past week. The content of this is cocaine. Okay. You're still watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. How disengaged textile worker survives awaiting terminal entitlements? Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying. Here's a look at some of our top stories. You heard that a governor of River State, Nyesom Wike, says he has the capacity to win the 2023 pres presidential election for the People's Democratic Party. You also heard that victim of suspected explosion that rocked a money community near Rigasa in Igabi local government area of Kaduna State narrates her ordeal. 
moving to health, public and private COVID-19 testing operation centers, though open but record low patronage of testing, as data from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control shows threats of COVID-19 infections are still not over across the country. The federal government, through the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, set a new policy starting in April in which inbound fully vaccinated international travelers will not require a pre-departure polymerase chain reaction uh, COVID-19 test. Trust TV's Aisha Salihu visits one of the testing centers to examine the low demand in PCR COVID-19 testing and brings us this report. It's over two years since the inception of the coronavirus disease, with a series of lockdowns enforced globally amid concerns of the spread of the highly transmissible virus. Measures to eradicate the disease, like contact tracing checks, through implementation of the polymerase chain reaction PCR COVID-19 test, treatment and vaccination, the virus continues to mutate, presenting with different variants. In recent times, testing across centers in the country has dropped amid rise in COVID-19 threats. PCR test for COVID-19 um, is part of a molecular testing. Uh, the PCR is just a, one of the techniques among the molecular um, diagnosis um, testing we have, so which has to do with um, the quantitative uh, testing that quantified um, the SARS-CoV-2 SARS -CoV for a particular patient. So the task uh, we use basically in Nigeria, the real-time PCR technique, the real-time PCR, this real-time PCR also estimate, um, is able to um, estimate the, the COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 for a particular patient. And so it's a technique that is highly sophisticated, highly due to the high level of precision to ensure that um, there's detection of that COVID gene. Test is the sample is being collected from the individual, from the patient, which is said that in that pharyngeal swab or an oral pharyngeal swab, or most time we collect both samples. So the nasal is from the nose, uh, using a swab stick, and the oral pharyngeal swab is also that using um, a swab stick. So when it's being collected into like the VTM tube, so the sample is being taken to the lab. So on arrival at the lab, there are different stages of, of the testing from basically from like what we have like extraction. So the, uh, the SARS-CoV is extracted from the, the sample. So normally it's an RNA virus. So we do what an RNA extraction. So the extraction can either be manual or automated depending on the facilities or what they have available. Expert at this private COVID-19 testing laboratory says testing is now based on specific purposes and needs. As at that time, you know Nigeria, at, at, we, we do a lot of traveling. And you don't know until when it comes to, especially at the weekend, you see a lot of clients, maybe some of our facilities, sometimes we have close to 300, 400 in a day. Basically, especially at weekends. So that volume at that time and the volume are usually high at that particular time. So the testing becomes uh, quite as part of part of a requirement for you to travel. So at that time, the volume was based on the traveling and secondly, if there are incident of one or two COVID cases in a particular office, you could decide, okay, like, let's say this organization will want to screen everybody. So as at that time, it could come in a massive volume. Sometimes they do have up to 500 staff from a particular organization coming for COVID testing. So it is a little bit relative, depending on the circumstances, the situation, and the need and the purpose for the testing. Although incidence of low testing is recorded, he further noted that it does not imply record of low infections. The fact that testing is low does not mean there is no testing. It's a two different things. Testing is low does not mean there are no testing. Are, are, are you getting me? Just that the compare, you know when you say testing, to compare to the population, to compare to the individuals, you can say, okay, there's no testing, but that does not mean there are no testing. 
On the foreign scene, Russia and Ukraine negotiators will resume face-to-face -face peace talks this week in Turkey, probing whether a near stalemate in fighting has forced Moscow to temper its demands. British military intelligence on Monday said the disposition of Russian forces in Ukraine during the last 24 hours has seen no significant change. However, the Defense Ministry said Russia has gained more ground in the south in the vicinity of Mariupol as it fights to capture the port. Reports say theft of humanitarian supplies and human trafficking threaten the situation for refugees who cross to Poland from Ukraine. Well, that's we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashen Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.